professional. <laughs> yeah. All right, hold on. Let's fucking let's try and take off normally. <laughs> it just it's it's not enough that I can't even get the first words out. Hold on, hold on a second. I'm Simon King, and this is What's Wrong. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I hope you're enjoying our fancy new arrangement where we have um, a wall behind us as opposed to when we are in that field and bats kept attacking us. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, you could be watching the podcast. If you're watching the podcast, you're my favorite child and the others can fucking die. I really appreciate you being here. <laughs> we have a fantastic podcast for you today. We are unfortunately short one producer. Mikey is on a secret mission for the government, and I could tell you, but I'd have to kill him. So I don't want to do it. And he's out there. <laughs> he will report back when he's available. But Mikey is currently not available. But we do have a fantastic guest in studio. Marito Lopez, ladies and gentlemen, here he is. Ah. Yo, 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 what's popping? What's popping? Oh, wait, that's super urban for us. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, our property values just went down. All right, let's ah. fucking... Ah, oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> Too far. Uh, thank you for doing the podcast, man. Yeah, thank you, bro. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I was just trying to think the other day. I was like, how long have I known you for? Oh, my God. It's like fucking 13 Dude. years? 10 yeah. years? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I started in 2009, and I met you back then. Holy fuck. Yeah. God, we're old. 2009, bro. <laughs> 2009. Do you that remember the... we used to do talk show Thursdays? I remember. Yeah. Crazy. I remember talk show. I remember sex arm wrestling that yeah. I did with Chris Gordon. <laughs> yeah. And I, w- and I would dress up in like a carrot suit. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was a uh, baby duck yeah. handing out baby duck wine. And I was hammered. You were <laughs> so hammered every show. <laughs> yeah. You fucking tied one on back then. There was, uh, there was that, uh, what was that one? Saw 2 or Saw 3 where they just cut the fucking table in half. Oh God! You know yeah, 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 yeah. They like saw it, uh, 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 like a like a office office yeah. table, just <laughs> office desk. That's fucking so dope, man. funny, dude. And they just let us do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, and and that. we threw carrots at people. Yeah, it was I remember crazy. that. Was that when Gordon and I did Fucked Friends United for Comedy Teaching? Was that that, or was it after that? I think it was. After I don't that. know, man. But it's I remember. All a blur. I remember 2009, like 2010 and 11. Uh-huh. It was fucking crazy. Because oh. you were there, mm-hmm. Chris Gordon, uh-huh. Rory Scovel Rory would, would come just down. come down and like yeah, yeah. And, and just do yeah. a, my open mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Tuesdays. yeah. Tuesdays, do you remember that? Uh, that was the downtown one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, Stuck with Amateurs Tuesdays. Stuck with Amateurs Tuesdays. Yeah. yeah. Was that 6th and 6th? No. No, that was Melange. That was Bro, Melange. I, me, me and Griffin used to run the best shows. Yeah. Back this is Calgary, day. by the way, for anyone yeah. listening yeah, at home. Yeah, Calgary. And for Americans, just, it's, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> they don't give a shit. They don't give a the fuck about a, us. What the fuck's a Calgary? <laughs> It's fine. Uh, Cal- Calgary sounds like a breed of dairy cow. It does, really. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Calgary. They're great. Cowtown. Hey, Cowtown. Yeah. Ca- yeah. Why is it Cowtown? Because of the stampede? Well, the stampede, there's just farms everywhere. Yeah. Everybody's or is it because they had to defeat the cows to retake the town? <laughs> That's a, that could be. That you know, could have happened. There was a time when it was just like, everyone arm yourselves. The yeah. cows are back. That's how the stampede started. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. People, don't, It's like St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. It's like people don't realize it's, a, it's an ancient celebration, yeah. right? It was <laughs> the cow town. Yeah, yeah. It was when they would fight cows yeah. barehanded. Barehanded. Bare hoofed. Bop. Yeah. Bop. UFC, Ultimate yeah. Fighting Cow. Yeah, right? but there's cows working out. They're still ready, bro. Oh, yeah, They're ready man. to those take cow- the city back. Cows will fucking throw down hard. Yeah, yeah. Don't fuck. Don't fuck with cows. Anyway, that's it for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is. Just we leave. Just don't fuck with cows. Yeah. Just nostalgia at the bit. Just, just yeah. yeah. Just remember when, and then they don't remember because they weren't there. <laughs> they don't know. That was a fucking nuts time though. I that was to... crazy, dude. Yeah. I honestly like every time uh, people always ask me like, when did you start? How was it when it started? I was like, bro, we were like blessed in Calgary. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Because like back then. All three of you guys were around, yeah. like big headliners, and like we we were like young kids, yeah. And no one would give us stage because there was no shows, yeah, right. And it yeah. was just like great to like be able to learn from all you guys. It was a, it was a weird intersection too because yeah. it was like one of those things where like for people who don't know who are listening or watching, um, Vancouver is kind of like because when you get west of the Rockies, you're kind of disconnected from a lot of the work. So yeah. in order to do the work in the wintertime, particularly, you would go to yeah. Calgary, Edmonton, usually Calgary as a hub yeah. to go from there to other places. Yeah. So a lot of comics, a lot of headliners and stuff would end up in the same spot at the same time. Yeah. And we would spend weeks there because it would yeah. just make more sense than going home. Weeks, so you, bro. Yeah, weeks. And it was like you, Rory Scovel, Gordon, Dave Merhage. Yeah. Oh, Remember yeah. all Rich, that shit? Yeah, yeah, Sonny, yeah. Sonny, Sonny Dollywell Sonny would Dollywell, come through. Yeah. And, we yeah. just, and Ivan Decker, Decker would just have a around, fucking yeah. blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, a, we, it was a fucking bonkers time. We used to go drink at the at the bar beside the laugh shop. Yeah, and then yeah. we also went to the, the ship sometimes. The ship and anchor fuck. was insane. <laughs> it was insane. A and I was like punk bar. I was like 22. Mm. I was 22, bro. Holy shit. 
I made that much raging older than you? alcoholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ra- yeah. Back yeah. in the day, all of us were. Oh yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? Sleep? I'm, sleep? <laughs> I'm not gonna sleep. I'm drinking bubbly right now. Yeah. That's how crazy it That's got. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you shut that. You shut that shit down. Yeah, me, dude. I'm just me. I'm just praying for death. Bro, over there's, here. A, there's a picture of us, mm-hmm. you and me, uh, that I always look at. Um, like it'll pop up on my memories uh-huh. and it's like at one of those talk to talk show Thursday shows yeah. and my shirt's off. Yeah. And it, as it was at the time and spick is written all over me <laughs> in black marker <laughs> and you're just drinking a beer, dying, laughing. And I'm like, I'm like fucked up. My eyes are crossed. Spick is written all over me in black marker. Well, you know what? I got to mark my territory. You know what I mean? Like I let people know who's in charge, right? I don't want people coming and taking my lady. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> Those yeah. shows were crazy. They were fucking nuts, man. Yeah. And there was like, and you just would, and then you would go out on the road, and you would do like these crazy gigs, and you would just party out there, and then you would come back and just be fucked up. And then I would stay with Gordon all the time. Yeah. So we would go out drinking, and we'd come home and just sit around and talk about our insecurities. It was yeah. fucking great. I used to live with Gordon. Remember? Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah I forgot about. I lived that. with Gordon, yeah. and he would always make fun of me because. He, uh, he got me that bed yeah. with the wheels on it. The race car bed. bed. Yeah. yeah, the race car bed. <laughs> I forgot about that. And by and by and like every night it would the bed would be in one corner of the room. And by the morning I'd be in some different corner. Because it would move. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It would yeah. move all the time. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And Just I, moving around. And I would never see Gordon. I would never no, see no, him when no, we lived together. No, no, no. He yeah. was never around. It was he's so like funny. he's like he was like a spirit. Yeah. The idea of him was enough. Yeah, right? yeah. And we haven't still haven't had him on the podcast. You haven't? I know. It never works out. That's crazy, bro. I was going to do a Zoom podcast with him, yeah. but I thought, no, the FBI yeah. will pick that up real quick. Yeah. By know, the way, Mike Greenwood, if there was anyone that was a CIA agent, oh, so 100%. it would be him. Oh, yeah. 100%. That would be so yeah. funny. Yeah, I've seen if his years files. from now, we're like watching a documentary and it was like, and Mike Greenwood, real name, uh, John Tyler. Yeah, and he's, got, <laughs> and he's got a gun in his fanny pack. Yeah, oh, yeah all this yeah. time. <laughs> Yeah, he was a fucking agent. The keys around his neck are for a nuclear weapon. Yeah, yeah. See, Mikey, you see how we talk about you when you're not here? Come <laughs> hope, back to us. I hope he's okay, bro. I hope he's okay, too. Yeah. I feel like maybe he just uh, took on a quest. He does that. He'll he take does? on a quest. Some, well, you know, this dragon bothering the city. Yeah. He's got to get out there and deal with it. <laughs> he heard something about cows. He's like, let's solve this fucking problem once and for all. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I've, I've, yeah, it's, it's, so, it's a trip as a comic, too. Like, Because when you, you meet people when they start out and then you just watch them grow and become superior comics to you, and you shake your fist at them, as I am now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're oh, your fucking eye, what's the God? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's good. Being a has-been is good. I get to see yeah. people succeed. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shut around. up. I'm fucking around. You're I'm the ge- greatest, bro. I'm a genius. Anyway, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you, bro, you are, though. I can't even say it. <laughs> Dude, I, I, you know what's crazy is that, like, I, you guys, you, when you guys, like, like were older than us or mm-hmm. whatever, but well, we still are, technically. You still yeah, are. You didn't catch up. You still up. are, and you guys are still fucking, like, great comics. You're just bending time when you guys were older than us, but now. <laughs> we're the same age. Yeah, now we're but the same But that's the thing about comedy, bro. We just stopped. We just, we just, for whatever reason, we stopped growing at 35, and we're all 35 years. That's it. We're all 35. That's yeah. it. Yeah. We just yeah. keep, we just stay at that age no matter how old you get. But I remember you guys were like, like my heroes and you technically like y'all still are like you gotta aim higher we're bro. friends <laughs> but it's yeah, true though no, yeah, yeah, like yeah, you yeah. bro like I, I still think about like comedy Monday night when you would like headline and oh, yeah, just fucking Monday murder that was out a of, fucking like, crazy space too that was so yeah. fun it, it's gone now right like, gone the room's bro gone. it's gone that room was like Historic. Keep tearing down our temples, man. Like yeah. the fucking places. Like, but I remember we would do these shows, and it would be like the crazy long shows on a Monday night. Everybody in town, like yeah. every comic that was around, and even who weren't on, were yeah. just there. Yeah, and it would just be this crazy atmosphere of like weird, like joy and kind of quasi competitiveness, and like oh, I gotta yeah. fucking. Th-. But it was a good way. It was like it was like okay, that makes me work harder. Like it was always that thing of like the talent was always so ridiculous yeah. ahead of you, especially when you close it. Because yeah. it would be a long show. Yeah. And you just watch people murder after murder after murder. And you're yeah. like, <laughs> like yeah, is yeah. there anything left? Oh, dude, you know? it, it was insane. Yeah. And uh, I, wrote an, I wrote an article about like uh, Toronto mm-hmm. when I was living out. When I lived, moved actually. Yeah. Like about how amazing of a scene it is. Yeah, yeah. And like how just vibrant it was. Especially when I moved there. Yeah. But man, I want to do one on Calgary. You should. Calgary was fucking crazy. Yeah, it was a crazy time. I mean, it was. It was. was. I was talking about this the other night with like... I forget who I was talking to. Uh, I think it was maybe it was Harris. I can't remember. Uh, Griffin for sure. And I Griffin. was saying about how the time is like, there's that weird thing. Like, 
you know, what was that saying? Like, I wish you knew you were in the good times when you were in them. Like, I wish you remember. Right, because it was like, I mean, and I know keep, time keeps moving on. And you keep doing different things and you keep growing and everything. But there is that weird nostalgia for, and it's not just because I know there's that easy thing of being like, well, I was younger then. Mm -hmm. And it was better because I was younger. But that's the opposite for me. Like, I hated being younger. <laughs> I much yeah. prefer getting older. And so for me, it's like I actually look back with such fondness at that camaraderie and that family. Yeah. And one of the problems, like I said, is, you know, the comics that when you're – when you're a headliner and your friends become headliners, you don't see them as much because you're yeah. just all working in different places. And yeah. that was what was cool about that time was that we would see each other all the time. Yeah. We would see each other all the time. Yeah. So it would be like you just hang out. Well, did we did we do Grand Prairie together? I think we did. Didn't we? No, no. no I, I, I never did. did it with you, which was crazy because okay, yeah. I always wanted to go out with you, but I yeah. did it with Dave. Oh, yeah. And, oh, fuck, and, yeah. and I did fucking disappeared. Oh, that was, that was when you disappeared? Yeah. Oh, fuck For three hell. days, bro, I was in a snowbank. They found me in a <laughs> snowbank. Uh, they all went home. They had to go home. And I, I like, had a seizure or something. <laughs> oh, and my God. I'm bro, sorry the, for laughing, but it's funny. It's funny. It's funny as shit. The, dude, the cops arrested me. Yeah. Right? And uh, instead of taking me to the drunk tank, they threw me in the highway somewhere. What? In, in Grand Prairie. Like, it was nuts. Oh, they fucking midnight walked you or whatever or they call it? The Starlight. That terrible or Starlight. Or whatever. Holy yeah. fuck, man. And, and, and then uh, somebody found me, and, like, I, I woke up in the hospital. It was Holy fucking shit, crazy. Holy shit, dude. It was nuts. But, like, back then it was, like, so, yeah. it was so, like, oh, my God, I could have died. My parents were so worried. Yeah. Everybody was so worried. Girl. I remember that. I remember yeah. being, like, where the fuck is he? Like, yeah. what's happened? Everybody was so worried. But now, like, looking back at it, I'm, like, that's so funny. <laughs> what the way, bro? But it is. But it, it was is. so like, funny. You know, 10 or 12 years hence, things yeah. always, like, near death is hilarious. It was so funny. Like, if you make it, it's really funny. Sometimes if you don't, it's funny. Well, Dude, not for you, but. Bro, I thought I thought my career was over. Yeah? Over. What, imagine ending it in Grand Prairie. What a terrible way to go out. That's your last show. Dude, I thought Dave would never talk to me again. Dave was one of my best friends. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I mean? I mean? It was, people understand. Like, it's, yeah. it's concerning. Like, no one's yeah. going to get upset with you for almost dying. Yeah. You know, they got. I mean, he Dave was upset. Well, <laughs> Dave was so mad. And well, I don't concerned. Blame I don't blame. Concern. Yeah, yeah. Right? like it was one of those things where, like, you hear like, because I mean, in our line of work too, substances, yeah. booze, yeah. drugs, whatever the fuck it is, it just yeah. it takes so many people down. So it I think does. there's that general concern, especially when you're young in the lifestyle, yeah. and you're like, I mean, all I got to do is fucking get my shit together for half an hour a night. Yeah, that's all I got to do. It's that's like, all yeah, that's all you got to do. do. And I got a hotel to go to. Yeah, yeah. fuck. Yeah, <laughs> it's like no one's watching me, and I have a bar tab. It's like, yeah, yeah, try not to have a problem, and they just yeah. pass you fucking rum and cokes. And you're yeah. like, that's a great way Dude, to live. Every time me and Griffin did a did a like a, a show together, yeah. or we like co middled or whatever. Every time we would go back to Calgary, some Booker would be yelling at us for running the bar tab. You know what I mean? They'd be like, "You little cocksucker, <laughs> you ran six Fucking bar tabs, like there's no more bar, bar tabs anymore because of you little fucks. <laughs> it was you Keep guys yelling at us, bro? Oh, I always thought it was the old guys that yeah. did it. No, it was I, would us. Get, I would get to places and they'd be like, "Well, we don't have a tab anymore," but then they'd yeah. sneak me a couple of beers, yeah. and I'd be like, "Motherfucker!" Like, <laughs> like it's like this, you get to a place and all of a sudden it's like it's a five hundred dollar deposit for your hotel. What the fuck happened? <laughs> yeah, what <laughs> what happened? Us. It was like, oh well, yeah, it, yeah. People fucking fucked up the hotel. <laughs> it was us, bro. It was crazy. But 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 like back to what you were saying, like. Dude, uh, Griffin's one of my best friends. Mm. I rarely see Griff. Yeah, I know. We live in the same city. I know. That's the way it works, right? I don't even yeah, see him, but problem. when we do see each other, yeah, it's like there's no distance between us. Well, it's like... It's, it's like, love always. It's like Chris Gordon is, is easily one of my best friends in the whole world, and we were inseparable for so many years, and then it just got to the point where, you know, as a comedian, not only... Not just logistically in terms of making it make sense financially and everything, but also I just don't... I just get to a point where I just can't be away... For two, I mean, I had a kid too. So, but I can't be away for two, three weeks at a time. I just can't. Simon, just I sense. always and no disrespect. Yeah, I always forget <laughs> you have a kid. Yeah, I know. Me and too. it blows my mind. He's outside right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's walking in circles every single He's time. He's got cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck is going on? Here? He's got a, he got a real deep voice. What the fuck? <laughs> he's great. He's great. Yeah. He's, he's got nunchucks. What the fuck? No one's gonna fuck. You're going to fuck with a six-year-old with nunchucks? What are yeah. you, why is he out there? That's the thing. It's more scary. If you go out at night, and it, this is one of them stabby parts of town yeah. uh, in Vancouver, and for people that are not super stabby, but a little stabby. But if you go out at night, and there's a six-year-old out there smoking with nunchucks. You're not yeah. fucking going near that guy. You're you know what I mean? Like, kid. what is up with that? What? Yeah, yeah a kid Dude, by you himself. See a, you see a kid in in the streets? It's crazy. He's got a leather jacket and a butterfly knife. What the fuck? Oh no, I disagree. That's my boy now. 
fucking. I look left, I look right. This kid's alone. He's got nunchucks. All right, I'll take a few cracks on the forearm. You're coming with me. I love the idea that you just spontaneously signed up for the Big Brother program. <laughs> yeah, we're fucking learning shit, bro. Yeah. Well, he's already halfway there. He's already halfway where yeah. I need him. That's yeah, just a weaponized six. Someone's already put in a lot of the fucking groundwork here. If you've got nunchucks out here alone at night, I, I, I can, this is malleable. Just a kid, just a kid rocking a leather jacket, just nunchucks. Like what? <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know. What about the Easter Bunny? What the fuck, man? It's like, all right, no, 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 no. <laughs> Where's your candy? That's so funny. But he's still got all the same problems. He's like, I sleep, 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 sleep. <laughs> Tired. <laughs> And he talks like a baby? Yeah, he I'm talks like a baby. I don't know why he went all Bill Burr. For some, it's like, God, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, dude, I got nunchucks. <laughs> bro, Sex. Bro, did was it you who could do Chris Rock? Can you do Chris uh, Rock? <laughs> you I could do two impressions of Chris Rock. Please do him, please. So here's my impression of Chris Rock. 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 And the other one, I like, here's my impression of Chris Rock, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> These motherfuckers don't even know. Dude, I fucking... Space is so big, I know nothing about space. <laughs> you had a Tracy Morgan, though. I do. That's right. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> I do the whole podcast like that. I don't care. What are you doing? You getting a snow back? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, my snowbag was cocaine. Oh God, dude, that's pretty so, much all the podcast. Is. I love, I love, I love impressions. I like bro. that guy. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I mean, I got nothing else to do. So <laughs> it's funny because I work on some, and then some. Because whenever a po- I've said this yeah. before on the podcast, when an impression sounds right to other people, it doesn't sound right to me. Yeah. But when it sounds right to me, it doesn't sound right to other people, which is really fucking frustrating. Well, but you're an amazing impressionist. Oh uh, well, thank you. I, yeah. I just got out of prison. That's good. I just got a prison. That's great. I like I, I became a Muslim. A Muslim? <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's I love Mike. I love how Tracy Morgan says Muslim. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of the Tracy cast. Yeah. To Mor- the Morgans. <laughs> the, the, the Morgans? That's our, that's, our, that's our sitcom. It's the Morgans. It's the Morgans. I'm Mr. Morgan. This is Mr. Morgan. You better tip the milk. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Do they all talk like that? Who the fuck is this? I love that. I love doing, because I love doing like short impressions that like just personify the, like my Tracy Morgan one is, Tracy Morgan accomplishing his ultimate goal is, I finished the puzzle. Like, to me, it's just like him. Like, he's so fucking proud of himself. Yeah. He's like, I did it. Holy yeah. shit. I made that. What are you going to do about it? But then he goes, if all his voice gets lower, he gets older. You know? Oh, my That's God. That's what Are you fine when you do an impression and you have to, like, make your face sort of like the impression? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Dino, Dino Archie, mm-hmm. he has this amazing Chris Rock. Does he? Yeah. And basically, it's like, you say... Uh, you say one thing, yeah. but then you like you detract one thing, but then you say the exact same thing. Yeah, so yeah. this is like his famous one, and yeah. it's so bad. But it's like it's like it's like I I ain't never rape a bitch, but I took some pussy without asking though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's so funny. Because it's so funny. dumb. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I ain't never rape a bitch. Because <laughs> to me, it's always the smile. Like it's the smile. It's like because yeah. I always feel like he's always like because he's always like cheeky. Yeah. And oh, gonna, that's the ah. thing. Yeah. Like he's so funny, bro. I oh, love dude, Chris Rock. He's, he's a beast. He's an absolute fucking always. monster. Absolute fucking always. monster. I remember years ago, I was sitting in like uh, I was in Santa Monica, and I was waiting to go see my lawyer at the time. And I was uh, just like, it was like hot. It was the middle of the day and I was just sitting there. I was like, I think I'll get me a Wetzel's pretzel, right? So I went and sat down. There's a big fat white guy eating a Wetzel pretzel. And Chris Rock starts coming up the uh, the promenade. Yeah. And at first I don't realize who it is because he's like a lot smaller than you think. Like he's very slight, right? Mm-hmm. He's very slight. Mm-hmm. And he's coming up and he looked at me and he went, <laughs> like that. And then all I can think is like the next day on stage, you ever see a fat white guy in a pretzel? Yeah. What the fuck? I got a pretzel all up in his face. Uh, <laughs> so I was doing like, like a bear that got can caught breaking do, into a cabin. Can you say you're getting a Wetzel pretzel as Tracy Morgan? You got a Wetzel pretzel. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's so the wet, funny. The wetzel. That's all right. I like them. I like a Wetzel pretzel. <laughs> They're my pretzel. favorite. And then it falls all up on my belly. All oh, it gets in that to Google around. That's what I call it. That's what a baby, that's how a baby finds out information. They Google, gaggle, Google it. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Google, gaggle, Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, it has been uh, said that I do another podcast uh, purely as Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know whether that's true or not. Yeah. The uh, Pumpin' It podcast. But that, 
That's funny because then I just create this whole world like Arnold is this crazy happy guy. Like he's having a great time. You know, he's, he's, you know, he's making toast to strudel. He's got a little horse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because the idea that these people live these lives, which is to me is entertaining because like, you know, you know the public persona of a celebrity, but then you can just, if you can do their voice, you can just manufacture a whole, a whole other thing. world they live in yeah. in a flattering way. And I did one where like, like Arnold, he was hit Tracy Morgan on visiting. And he's like, you know, I have a question for you. You ever see a fat raccoon? That's what I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> you never Dude, see those. They're crazy. Yeah, there's, that's nothing, right. there's nothing better than impressions. I love it. It's fun. It's a silly it's fun my favorite thing to do. Thing. When I was a kid, I used to just watch impression videos. Mm. Rich Little. They're still entertaining, man. They're fire. Like, you just try to figure out, like, what entertains me, too, as an impressionist is, like, A, when someone can do, like, Harris Anderson, for instance, can do impressions I can't do yeah. because they're just out of my range. Yeah. So amazing. Like, yeah. I just, I'm so jealous. And then the other thing is, like, when someone cracks an impression and figures it out, right? Like, when they figure out how to do it for the first time. Yeah. And you're like, that's what it is. Because it's, often you have to, like, find a word or something that you can grab onto. Yeah. Or noise. Like, you can do impressions by just doing noises. Yeah. Right? Like, oh. You know what I mean? Like, you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Al Pacino. hoo ha yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's more Chris, Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> Dude, when I was a kid, oh. I, I would watch people do impressions of, like, Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No idea who no Jimmy idea Stewart who is, was. No. But I loved the voice. Yeah. But the voice the thing, was like, so funny. Because it's just someone becoming someone else. Yeah, yeah. And then I like it. It's funny because, like, now with the, the rise of, like, deep fakes and stuff, like, sometimes I'll do them just to, to do them. But I find that they're nowhere near as entertaining. Because, yeah. like, you've got the person's face on there but it's not as it's not as entertaining like watching someone turn into the person yeah. like when you do a Robin Williams you know you make a face go like this or, hello fuck <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh out of nowhere <laughs> okay and then you become him hey how are you fuck <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah you know and then that's kind of like the idea for me is like 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 uh, Peter Kalamis for instance yeah. he's been an incredible impressionist just yeah. got a, a great and I love to see because I firmly believe that most people can do impressions it's just that most people don't know they can do impressions but they can do a few like one or two really well and not that many I think most people you can do that. I think a few people can do a lot okay, which is I kind of what I am. But I'm I can do them okay. I can do a lot, which is very utilitarian for what I do for a living, right? So if I want to do something, I can just throw that in there. Whereas like if you can do a few, like there's one guy online that does an amazing Matt Berry impression. It's exact. It's fucking perfect. There's no there's no way you can tell the difference. It's he's got every intonation, every. But I don't know if he can do anything else. Yeah. Because how would you fucking top that? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. You know, you got to get on here on this pod, too, is Malik. Alasal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, he yeah, that fucking hilarious. does all the Sopranos. Does he all, all the Sopranos? Perfectly. Fuck, that's yeah, great. I can't so do any good. of them. Can't yeah. I think, I think cause basically a Tony Soprano would be like a Gandolfini's essentially like a Jason Statham, really. Yeah. I sound like fucking like that. Yeah, like that. <laughs> But just breathing, the the breathing's just, big for Tony. Oh, yeah. the fucking, yeah. <laughs> you know what it is. Face. Yeah. Are you fucking talking to me like that? <laughs> yes. If you can do it, bro. If you can move some food around on your plate while you're doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, you can, bro. If you, yeah, you if you watched it enough, I feel yeah. like you could do it. I was thinking it would be funny. It was actually as I was uh, uh, getting home today. I was thinking it would be funny to put like do some Mandalorian episodes and just do the because you because you can't see his face. Just voice over all the characters with different celebrities. Yeah. So like Paul Giamatti as the Mandalorian. Oh, like, that's so well, funny. This is the way. Like. <laughs> You, that's amazing. I am a uh, bounty hunter. <laughs> I'm here to save the Grogu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little weird frog guy. One of Very my fa boring. my favorite things though in life is seeing like white guys do black voices. It's so funny. Yeah, I know. Or or like a Mexican voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, but you know. Yeah, it's it's difficult. Like you to, and Gordon used to have a pretty good Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing, yeah, right. I got a pretty good Gordon. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, okay. But no one at home will know what that is. But um, but the thing is, is like I find too, it's like it's fun. It's a difficult thing too because, as a white comedian, um, like and doing voices, it's like you try and like. So I do voice work as well. I do voice acting as well. And when they come down, they go, "This is for this role and everything, and it has to be a person of that um, ethnic background or that um, uh, that group." And I'm like, "That's fine. That totally makes fucking sense to me. There should be equality in that." But then it's also like doing voices as long. I, it's difficult to say because. <laughs> I'm looking at it from a white guy's point of view. So I, I can only say it from my point of view because I don't have the experience elsewhere, right? Yeah. I don't. My always thinking was like, as long as it's like, 
like, first of all, it's a celebrity. That's a different thing because a celebrity is a celebrity. You're just doing an impression of a famous person. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so that's like, I think that kind of that, I think that's okay. But like, I used to do this uh, voice in, in my last hour. I had this bit about, um, and in the context, it was about how shitty I am for complaining because I don't have any real problems because I'm a white guy. Like, it's like, and I couldn't do my stand-up comedy in Africa or whatever. Like, could you imagine? And then I would have that voice in it. But the voice was an impression of Doug Mutai, who's a comedian yeah, yeah, friend yeah. of ours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And From so I can do an impression of my friend, but he's like not, so it's like, it's difficult because like, it's, I'm doing this sort of like Kenyan voice or whatever, but it's like, so it's, it's, a, it's a difficult balance because intent and context are so fucking important in everything. But also I can understand why people would not, uh, not care what my intent and context are. Like it's difficult yeah. because I don't want to upset anybody other than monsters. I want to upset monsters all the time, but most people I don't want to upset or make feel bad in any way, but it's difficult because you look at the comedy device and you go, Oh, this would be so much funnier if I did this, but I can't do that. So yeah. I have to go and you're like, but it's right there. And you're like, it's yeah. frustrating. You know, I it, don't know. It's a, but yeah, I don't know something, bro. I, um, it, it might not be the same, but I, I asked a girl, Mm -hmm. A tattoo artist, if mm -hmm. she could do a, a tattoo of a Salvadorian bird mm -hmm. on my um, arm. Okay. And uh, she was like, I don't think I can. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, and, and we like had it booked and everything. Yeah. But then last minute, she was like, I, I just don't feel right putting this like bird on you. And I'm a white woman. And I was like, uh, that's weird. I was like, I'm giving you permission. Yeah, you're asking for it. I'm asking for it. So, and now yeah. you make me feel like shit. You know yeah, what I mean? For and that's like, the thing is like, it's like, I think too, is like, at what point do we say with art particularly, and this is where art is, is difficult because it's like, you, you know, at what point is art a standalone thing? Yeah. Like, and then where do you get to is go, oh, well, I have this um, indigenous art in my house that I really, I'm not allowed to have it now. Like yeah. I bought it and I, I yeah. love it. And I'm allowed to, like, it gets to be a difficult thing because it's not like, it's not like you're running the British Museum when you're like, that shit's ours now. Like, it's yeah, not yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you're like, I'm supporting and paying and wanting to help. And then at that point, too, it's like, well, then where does this end? Am I not allowed to listen yeah. to certain music? Am I not allowed? That's not, yeah. that doesn't seem to me to be productive. Yeah. yeah. But I also understand, absolutely, that things have to correct. They have to go a certain degree to try and fix some shit. Yeah. Because and it's not going to happen overnight. So if you want to correct things, you have to overcorrect things to get yeah. things back to at least quasi fair. Yeah. And so it's a difficult thing because as a comedian particularly, you know, you want to do the, the the number one thing is funny. That's all we give a fuck about. That's our number one thing. And then after that there's all the other shit that goes down. Um but I also think that you can tell immediately if someone's hateful, they're not funny. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's instantly sure. takes them off the, off the what you were talking about it's intent. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like even with that tattoo artist like her intent is like selfish. Yeah, it, it almost feels like oh, now you're passing your guilt on to me. Yeah. So what's your intent here? You know what I mean? That's weird. Is too. it really to protect my people? Because yeah. you're gonna, you're you're gonna put this fucking bird on me, or is it? Or are you just protecting your little? That's weird too, because that's like that seems like a kind of a selfish move, because it's like, it's like oh, I know that you want me to do this thing, and and you 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 know and. Yeah, I mean, that's taking ownership of that away from you. You know what I mean? Like, it's like it's removing yeah. your agency there. And yeah. I think that's weird. Yeah. But then that's also the thing is like, it's like you look at it and you go, well, like for a while, because, you know, not that long ago, like fucking, oh, I don't know, five or six years ago, seven years ago, you could basically get away with any accent or impression on stage you wanted to. Uh, but I still think the same rules applied. It was intent. Like, yeah. I think we could, if we all saw someone doing something that was in it, we'd all be like, well, fuck that guy. Like, yeah, that yeah, guy's a piece sure. of shit. I think that's you know where people I mean? fuck up what parody is all the time. Yeah. A lot of people think they're doing parody. Yeah. And they don't understand that to do parody properly, you have to understand both sides. You have exactly. You understand what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. Right? yeah. And yeah. a lot of people, they try to hide behind parody, but they're just being flat out fucking racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you can see it, though. Like, yeah. it's, it's very oh, easy it's, to spot it's like, when somebody doesn't know. It's undeniable. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the thing is, I think, I think, like, I think you can tell when someone's doing something. Like, someone once said to me that, like, one of the things they liked about my character stuff was they were always smarter than me. Like, every character that I would do was always like someone who was yeah. better off or smarter or doing better than me. Because my summation of myself is like, I think comedy. A, I think comedy needs humility. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, I think comedy. I think when comedy, like, because even comics who are like cool or like who are like famous or successful, whatever. If they lose that ability to laugh at themselves, first and foremost, I think they lose the ability to tell you what to laugh at. Because I think without 
you know, it's it's like you can't get ready without a mirror. You, you won't know if your hair is perfect. Well, it's the same thing with comedy. You won't know if you're doing the right thing unless you're facing yourself to some degree. And I think that's where a lot of, uh, you know, uh, more right-wing, politically conservative comedians kind of fall down, is that yeah. they don't find humor in themselves because they're so driven by message. And I'm not saying... I'm not saying that left-wing liberal comics can't be like that. Of course they can. And it, but we all see it. And yeah. I think it's easier to call people on that. But I think the same thing happens with anyone who takes themselves too seriously as a comic, I think, does so at their own detriment. But given the environment that comedy has been, I mean, I remember it was, it's, it was almost all white. It still is almost all white guys, right? You're white, right? <laughs> I mean, you better be, otherwise you're not allowed in here. <laughs> Holy shit. There's a sign outside, all right? <laughs> Yeah. I wouldn't tattoo a Latino guy onto a white man's body either, just to be fair, dude. <laughs> Bro, I was so Well, it depends bad. on the circumstance. Sure. <laughs> well, she can't be buried in a white graveyard. You know how it works after that, right? I was so invested in what yeah. you were saying. And then I just threw that at you. I was like... I was like <laughs> 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 well, my listener doesn't like it if we get too serious. He gets real upset. He's like, I, I like, uh, I like, I don't like too many facts. But I do. <laughs> but I do think, and that's the thing too. Is like, it's like I think that, and there's that 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 thing of the comedy car, and a lot of people don't understand that when comics get together, the green room, the comedy car, all bets are off. If you know the, pr it's like, oh, it's bro, like I've said you're, the you're, worst thing in in the world. Me too. Because we're in the green Because you're friends and you and understand. And you better each not other. rat. Yeah. And there's a thing. Yeah. Don't you fucking rat. Oh, dude, there was some guy <laughs> years ago. Years ago, we got in a comedy car and we went down to this gig. Yeah. And we're in a comedy car and we're fucking around. Yeah. Turns out at the end, this motherfucker recorded it all. Oh! Oh, I know. I know. We got him to erase it, but we damn near fucking strung him up. Like, are you out of your fucking mind? That's a death sentence. He's like, I was going to record and just put out a podcast when people don't know. I go, are you fucking... Are you lunatic? Yeah, are you insane? That's like, insane. <laughs> dude. And yeah. I love it, too. It's like, it's like the shit that you say, because it's also... Our sense of humor as comedians tend to be really fucked because that's yeah. how we adapt. That's how we evolve. Yeah. Most comedians have some sort of struggle that they're dealing yeah. with or something. And so our sense of humor are quite dark and fucked up. And and, and also, when you're around comics, they're the only other people in the world who get it. it. They're the only people who understand. Like, yeah. like, like, like uh, you know, it, it's your, your partner or your family or anyone else is, unless they're a comedian, they're never quite going to understand 100% what you're dealing with. Yeah. And yet other comics like instantly are like, okay, we can make these. And that's why you can always tell when a comic won't get on board with that. You're like, suspect. Suspect, dude. Fucking narc. <laughs> but that's the thing, bro. Like me me and uh, Jared, we've been watching like so many mafia movies. Mm -hmm. And comedy is the mafia. Kind of is, yeah. Because Without we... the power or prestige. <laughs> <laughs> or and, the, and we or kill, the money. And we kill less. <laughs> and we kill less. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we do these jobs yeah. that we have to yeah. do. And when we're alone together, it's yeah. like. Bro, I gotta be around people I could trust. Yeah, yeah. Because I yeah. am a fucked up dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off stage, even yeah. more so. Yeah, I don't you know think I, I want to hang out with people who aren't fucked up. You know, because we're because you know? we're like we, we like find like solace with each other's like fucked up sense of humor. Yeah. When the first when it's the worst fun. when the worst things happen, the first like when my dad died, I got I got these messages from comics, and they were the worst, and they were the best. It was the best because it normalized it. It was like <laughs> it was like <laughs> I just get these ones like. Um, uh, like Stanhope sent me uh, on Twitter. He tweeted at me, which was really, really nice. And he goes, uh, he goes, my dad was the nicest guy in the world. And he goes, and when my dad died, nobody noticed, nobody cared. He goes, my mom was an absolute cunt. And when she died, I got half an hour out of it. I'm just saying you're not getting any material. Yeah. So it was such a nice thing. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, it's like, that's the, how we kind of just handle the terrible thing, and I, I try to talk about that in my new hour because I'm trying to address why I think about things the way I do because nothing bothers me more than when someone's like, too soon, bro. I was like, yeah. you don't know. You have no, you don't get to tell me too soon. I was yeah. making jokes about my grandma an hour after she died. I was on stage. My dad, too. Like, it's just the yeah. way it works. You know, it's like, it's just, you process the way you process. If you yeah. don't deal with the pain, it's just going to drown you, right? So oh, it's big like, time. Yeah. I don't know. It, it To me, it's like, any comic that like, and I'm not saying all comics have to be fucked, but I know very few comics that are good that aren't a little bit fucked. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of that. Like, yeah, and dude, it, man, I'll be honest with you. I don't even think it's a fuck thing. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like it's not a it's not a thing that it's like uh, destructive and like chaotic. It's just a it's like an honesty thing. Yeah. To me, are yeah. you honest enough? Yeah, you yeah, know what that's I mean? it. Are you yeah. speaking about who you are? Are you? Yeah. Are, because I think that's the thing is like if you put too many things between. I mean, there's compromise and there's and there's performance yeah. and there's a way of like adapting to the audience. Like I always said that like what I think comedians do, particularly 
what I'm trying to do uh, for my style of comedy is take the big thing and just adapt it so that it's easier to handle or easier to make fun of or easier to tolerate. Like, find the humor in the, in the big, terrible thing, the hard thing, the thing that a lot of people don't want to think about. Make that something. My job is to adapt that to be a kind of a mouthpiece for the terrible and make it funny. And that's yeah. all I want to do. And I think that in order to do that, you have to really look at the big thing. It's like you're not going to – if you break your leg and you refuse to look at it, you're going to have a broken leg that's going to fucking heal weird and it's never – you have to you have to address it. If you don't yeah. address it, it's yeah. not going to get better and you can't yeah. fix it and you can't – and addressing it for me and for you know you and a, yeah. most comics is humor, right? That's yeah. Funny. Well, it's almost like I, I think a lot of it is letting the audience know, like the average person that comes up to watch a show, that they're not alone. Yeah. We're all fucked up. Yeah, yeah, We're all thinking yeah. about this shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know, we yeah. all have problems. Laugh at me for a sec. Forget about your own bullshit. Yeah. And then when you hop in that car to go home again, it's all going to get very real for you again. Yeah. But while you're here, you yeah. know, worry about me. And that's, yeah, yeah. It's like, I find that, like I used to say, is like I've hugged an inordinate amount of crying middle-aged people after my shows. You'd be surprised how many fucking people who are just like, it breaks them or something. And it's a good, but in a good way. They're like, yeah. oh my God, thank you for saying the thing. And I was like, that got to be good. Because, you know, being funny, killing is great. Oh man, yeah. it's fucking great. Killing is fucking great. But you have to get so good at killing yeah. that you're willing to fuck with that model, for me at least, to find the next level of stuff. The fulfillment, yeah. the fan base, the, the connection that I've got since I've decided to start talking about, you know, more difficult things has been phenomenal. Yeah. And it's still fun to, you know, go up and do llama fisting material. Fair enough. But, like, actually <laughs> talking about well, gross consumerism in the That's the next step in comedy, though, right? It was when you're not afraid of silence, right? It's not being afraid of that moment. Not afraid of, like, a minute or two of where everything goes back. Because I think when you're new and you get hooked on killing and killing and mm. killing, you think you have to la have a laugh every fucking 10 seconds. Yeah. It's when you're not afraid of just fucking bring it back for a sec. Yeah. Yeah. That's when good comedy... That's good yeah. comedy comes out of the silence, I think. Because yeah, I think you have time. to give them time to digest it, too. If you're going to hit people with harder concepts. Yeah. That's like, why, personally, in my when I do 20 minutes, 15 minutes, no laughter, I know I'm in the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're thinking. Speaking of thinking. <laughs> oh, these guys are working hard. <laughs> uh, all right. Here we say. Okay, so you know what we do. Now, you know what it's time for. Okay, so uh, normally Mikey would be yelling that too. Yeah. And then what it is is uh, there's this. Uh, you know, I, I I was wandering around the internet. I found this random topic generator for people who have social problems, and I thought, well, I know people with social problems. They come on my podcast. So what it is <laughs> is it's uh, you just randomly generate topics, and we just talk about whatever it is. So we're going to do a couple randoms. Okay. We usually do that around the half hour mark. It's usually shitty, but we'll do it. Okay, so let's do this first one. It's uh, all right. What's the most underrated or overrated TV show? The most overrated TV show is Friends. For sure. Fuck Friends. Yeah. 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 I hate Friends, dude. <laughs> Jared's upset. Friends. No one told you it was going to be this yeah. way. Hey? I'm just, I'm texting Marito right fucking yeah. now. <laughs> pull it back, bud. Pull it back. Yeah, pull, pull it, it back. back pull it back. Pull it I back. hate Friends. I hate uh, friends. You hate Friends? Yeah. What's your What's the worst part about the Friends? It's just so goofy. Too many whites. I too many you. white. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. It's too that was, goofy. That was the original and the, name. And the, and the audacity too. Yeah. Whites. Too, too many whites. <laughs> or just whites. Yeah. Just, just the show called whites. whites. It's so funny, dude. If they, if they would have, bro, if they would have doubled down and just said whites. It would have been a great show. Oh, fine. Whites would be a great, like, whites would just be the best. Just remake Friends, but they're just just rolling in privilege. Yeah. As they were, living in those giant apartments. Yeah. Like, you know what you I mean? you don't like, even have extras that are people of color. Get the fuck no, out of here. In no. New York? <laughs> yeah, everyone knows New York is notoriously all white, right? <laughs> it's not fucking Wisconsin. Oh, my you God. Imagine if they set Friends in Wisconsin, but it was all black people. Like, what the fuck <laughs> is going on? <laughs> <laughs> the you know, show is so confusing. You know what I think the most overrated show is? Mm. Atlanta. Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh. oh. Where are the whites, man? Where are the white, white people? Where are, are the whites? whites? Where are the white people? Huh? <laughs> Fuck. Oh. I'm oh. going to just pull that out where you go, where are the white people at? I'm just going <laughs> to pull that out, and that's going to be what the podcast is called. <laughs> where are the white people at? Where are the white people at? <laughs> and just a, a white guy on the God mic yelling yeah. at too. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey. Even see him? They don't know I'm white. <laughs> no, they don't know it's white. We were hoping to let him get away with some racial slurs yeah. later. Damn. Oh, my God. You fucking wrecked his under. <laughs> <laughs> What's the most uh, underrated TV show, though? That's a good question, because mm. there's so many, like, Oh, mm -hmm. you know what? Even though it's it's very ov overrated, I don't think it gets what it deserves fully. Is the Sopranos? 
Because mm. The Sopranos is more than a gangster show. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, dude. I don't know. What, was that, <laughs> yeah, you're was, being weird, man. Was that called? <laughs> you mean the show Italians? I've seen the show Italians. I've seen that show. <laughs> Gabagool? Gabagool <laughs> Italian white. <laughs> Look, Sopran Sopranos was not written by a human being. No. That was written by Allah. Yeah. God. That was God written wrote by God. He's just out there writing scripts. That no, was no, written no. by no God, No one's listening bro. to me anyway. Dude, <laughs> for real. David Chase was merely a vessel. Could you imagine the fucking elevator pitch with God? Oh, dude. <laughs> Executive gets in there. What do you got? I don't know. Uh, okay, it's a fucking, uh, it's a mob family. Now, Bing. Fuck! No, 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 no. You gotta listen. Tidal wave. It's a mob family in New Jersey, but that's nothing. To ignore that, it's about life. It's about appreciating life because yeah. it could just go black at any second. Yeah. Fire. Fire pit. Any second, Sopranos could go Atlanta. Any second. Any you know second. what I mean? Like any any mo any moment. <laughs> My I don't God. Know. That's so and good. And to be clear, the, the Italian mob show was written not just by God, but by Allah. By a lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But not just, not just no. any. Hey, hey no hey, motherfucking man. white god writing Sopranos. <laughs> motherfucking <laughs> white god, white god <laughs> writing <laughs> Sopranos. It's gonna hey. be a lot though. <laughs> How come they don't have like a Danish? They gotta have a gabagool. <laughs> 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 oh well, this was fun. Uh, <laughs> that was so good. That was fun. All right, hold on. Here we clip. go. Let's do. You want to do another one? We do another. One? <coughs> oh, this is fun. Uh, <clears throat> What's your worst vacation experience? Oh man, uh, we're taking calls. You know what? I uh, you that, go on vacations a lot. I I mean, I've been to like Cuba. I've been I've been to like places, but like the most of my vacation has been Canada. <laughs> I've been around Canada. It's a holiday. Yeah, it's like I I've been to Cuba. Spend a little I'm time in Moose Jaw. I can't talk shit about Mexico. I can't talk shit about Costa Rica, El Salvador. You know what I mean? You think people in Costa Rica, and people El Salvador, have... and Mexico listen to this? <laughs> but still, this is prohibited bro, radio. People who are like, oh, I went to Cuba and the food's nasty. Fuck well, you, I don't think bro. that's possible. You're in Cuba. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think I think I would think of all the things Cuba. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some things in Cuba that maybe you're like, oh fuck, man, that's. But food, I can't imagine that being a problem. Well, no, I it mean, is. It's uh, you're talking about people that went to resorts in Cuba. You're yeah, talking but, about resort yeah, 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 food in even, Cuba. Right, fair but enough. even still, yeah. you go to a resort, you go find shit to complain about. No, bro, you go to a three star resort in Cuba, then you you should have just stayed home. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you just all of a sudden you're working on a '57 Chevy's differential. What the fuck's yeah. happening? <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think put I've, on these fatigues. Ah, fuck! <laughs> I don't think I've had a bad vacation. You haven't had, had a, a bad vacation. Good vac That's good. Yeah, man. What's I'm a very positive guy? So you are very positive. Sobriety does that to you. Does it? <laughs> that that'll wreck my brand. I better keep drinking. Can you imagine? Can you imagine me positive? Hey guys, everything's great. They're like, oh, he killed someone. There's no fucking way he didn't kill yeah, someone. Yeah, welcome to what's wrong. Nothing with Simon <laughs> King. Everything's great. <laughs> Nothing. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> my career's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> As I put a meat thermometer in my ear. Yeah! <laughs> I can't remember the letter F. You know, you know, you know what, though? Uh, th this is sort of a different answer, but I took my ex to mm -hmm. Mexico with yeah. me. And it was the best because I didn't spend any time with her. <laughs> so her worst, worst vacation experience her, would uh, be Mexico. Uh, <laughs> I think she hated what, it. I think we know what bro, went wrong. Bro, she used to I she used to be eating lunch and I would see her yeah. at the <laughs> at the at the room and I'd walk up to her and be like, You're here too? <laughs> She'd get so mad. Oh, at she me. must have loved that bit. Dude, she hated it. What were you doing? Buddy, I was walking, I was buying cigars. Just out. I went to a cigar lounge. I would walk an hour to a cigar lounge, yeah. spend two, three hours there, then yeah. walk another hour back and then I'd meet her for dinner. That's how you hang out with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I think that's true. Sparingly. How does she know you're not that's a hitman? She, that's for true. All, she knows you're a hitman. You're like, look, we can take a holiday, but I got work today. And she said um, it was cool, but then by the the last night, fucking starts crying. Get, yeah, get, yeah. Get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I uh, hate this. How dare you're you want to spend boyfriend. time with me? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, bitch, you should have told me that. They that you were a bad boy. I love that you said she was fine until the last night when she started yeah. crying. I think that was yeah. an accumulation of not being fine the yeah. entire week. I think we're learning that Marito maybe doesn't read people so well. Yeah. It's like, what? what? Why are you slamming doors? I'm going smoking. <laughs> she got weird on day nine. Yeah. You know? <laughs> She's writing in her diary and weeping. What the fuck's with yeah. all the candles in the and, hotel room? And we were, gonna go, we were on our way to a catamaran. And I don't know if you'll know what that is. Yeah. Catamaran? Yeah. Is like I know a what a catamaran is. Yeah. boat with a net. And she was crying. I'm like, 
Man, are you crazy? You can't cry. You can cry when you got one hole. Not when you got two. You got two holes, you fucking put it together. Yeah. All right? One hole for... And you just made her sit on one side and you sit on the other. <laughs> like, you are on that pontoon. Hey, you're here? You're here too? <laughs> what you're the fuck? <laughs> yeah, bro. Oh she she hated it. Yeah, well, yeah. I can <laughs> understand. <laughs> Love of my life, though. Love Aww. of my life. Well, Gonna you, marry her. Aw, yeah. that's nice. Well, I mean, all you got to do, but don't say at the wedding, you're here too? Don't fucking say that at the vows. Bring it do back. You, do, you hey. t- do you take this woman? Hey, I know you. <laughs> you're in the pictures. Dude, that was a love your life. I can't stop thinking. How did you treat women that you just like? Didn't like, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's the love of my life. She's the love of my life. This chick, love I don't of my like. life. this chick I don't like is currently in a box on her way. <laughs> Fucking Vietnam in a boat. <laughs> I just like got rid of her. Like, what the fuck? Oh my god. <laughs> what? Well, can we do more random? Yeah, we can do more random. Hold on, I'll just fucking. I love. I love this. Random. Random. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go. All right, let's do this. Let me let me press the generate again here. What do we got here? Um. Oh, if you. Oh, this is fun, because as comedians, if you had intro music, what song would it be and why? Now, let me say this. Not talking about stage. I'm talking about if you just had intro music for every time you walked in a fucking room, what song would it be and why? Uh, a Day in the Life by the Beatles. That's the, Oh, nice. <laughs> Holy shit, you're on point. Isn't that crazy? You got that right away. You walk in. I read the news today, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> just the whitest song to this. Little Latino man. She's just writing away. On the music, he's here. <laughs> he came back. <laughs> <laughs> but then the music starts to fade away because you yeah. saw her. Yeah. <laughs> it does that part. You know that part in the song where it goes like... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what would yours be, Jared? My walk-in music? Walk-in music, if you had oh, it's always music. It's got to be Break Stuff by Limp Bizkit. Oh, like it, like it. Yeah, right away. It's not, not even close, close fucking Not, not even close, dude. Wow, wow, wow. I think uh, what would I, my mind be? I mean, I'm part. I'm part of me is like uh, I feel like it should be um, Carmina Burana, um, but also <laughs> do 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 just like every because I think the idea of walking into like a Seven Eleven do 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 just really just wait because it would just get so much of a pain in the ass because it would have no subtlety to it. It would be just like completely. I like it. So everybody's got intro music too. So when people are coming coming yeah, and going, yeah. it's just a fucking oh just like a fucking minefield auditory of the- <laughs> disaster <laughs> sensory just overload. Like, oh man! And then everyone with Nickelback just sounds the same. You know, like yeah. I can't tell who's coming and going. You know what? I you know what, man? Mm-hmm. You would be amazing if you walked into any room and it's just like Spanish cumbia music. Because your energy, that would be fire. Dude, I fucking, I love like uh, when I would drive to LA and stuff, I would love when I hit the Ranchera music. Yeah. When you hit the stations, I'd be like, that's the fucking jam. That would wake me up for the rest of the drive. I used to hate Lion music when I was a kid. Really? Hated it. I just hate it. Because it's what your parents listen yep. to. So I that like, you know, I gravitated towards like shit that they listen to here. One of my, uh, but now I love Spanish music. One of my, right now, old, old old school Cuban radio. That's on one of my I fucking love things, Cuban right, music. Fucking right next to Yacht Rock. You know, there there you go. Go. Yacht Rock. Fuck Gotta yeah. white it up a little bit, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love how one of the topics on here is giraffes. No question mark, just giraffes. Go. How is that a fucking topic? Keep your dick strong like a giraffe's dick strong, neck. Dick <laughs> Remember? That's meant to be. Yeah. Keep your dick strong like a giraffe's neck. What, oh, oh, here we go. Oh, what? Uh, no. Well, okay, here we go. This is funny. When do you want to retire? What do you want to do when you retire? Well, as a comic, mm. I think uh, there's no retiring out of this. No, you're, unless, just, you're in it. For, it's like unless, the mob. Unless, it is like the mob. So uh, I think I've told Jared this. I, I, I'm going to, and, and, and I say this like funny in a, in a cool way. Not in no problematic way yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to el salvador maybe 57 58 mm-hmm. take all my clothes off go to the beach that columbus landed on and mm-hmm. he saw the mm-hmm. mayans and uh, i'm gonna take my clothes off light a cigar get a little bit of a hard dick mm-hmm. <laughs> and walk into the ocean 57 and then, and then, and then, 57 and then gary Ooh. well because short guys bro Dude. What do you mean short guys, no, bro? No, no, man. Short Danny, DeVito, Danny DeVito's 72 or yeah. something. And that guy's the boss. No, no, but I'm saying, like, our bodies hurt more than yours. How? Oh, I, I would argue that. I know, <laughs> oh, man. You're compact. Dude. You got a little battery. But yeah. You got a recharge. <laughs> That might be it. That's what it is, the little battery. You got a little yeah. battery. <laughs> it's a little battery. So I'm going to walk in, and then uh, uh, as soon as you hear the cigar go out, yes. 
That's it. It's over. That's your exit. <laughs> I read that. <laughs> you, I read the news today. Oh, boy. 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> the sh- the fish are just swimming around. <laughs> I like this. That's amazing. Who knew that the Beatles attracted sharks? That's the thing. Like, you had no idea. <laughs> just walking with your intro music. Walking through the mighty Pacific. Slowly turns into under the sea. Yeah. <laughs> the sea. <coughs> 57 seems young, though. As someone who's 45. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's some real Logan's Run shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a lot of time, dude. That's You'd be surprised how fast that 12 years no, goes once well, you're 45. Uh, beyond jokes, beyond all that bullshit, I, uh, I, I, want, I don't know what... The Sopranos, bro, mm-hmm. makes me want to live... As long as I can. Yeah. Because this thing that we live called life, it's crazy that we get to live it. Yeah. You won the fucking lottery by being alive. You know what I mean? Yep. And I remember when I first started doing comedy, I would always like try to like make, try to pretend I was someone I'm not. I always try to act like I wanted to kill myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, comics yeah, yeah. always like, oh, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to do all yeah. this dumb shit. But now, bro, now that I'm 36, I'm like, fuck, I don't want this to end. Yeah. You've only got 21 years. You know what, <laughs> what the fuck are you going to do? Yeah, dude. Dude, you don't even have, you can't, that's not even time for a good RRSP. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's funny because when I was started out, I was, uh, I was, I was fake happy. I would pretend to be, because I started when I was 22 and I was much more of a cartoon of a human. And I just wanted everybody to like me all the time because I was desperate for affirmation. And so I would just do whatever possible to make, and I would try to be myself. And it would drips and drabs, and I would try and put it in. Then I was like, I can't really talk about this stuff yet because, like, no, you know, I don't have right to talk about it. I didn't feel like I'd earned, I had the agency to talk about terrible shit. And then I realized I'm like, oh no, your brain is broken. It's like fuck, legit broken. So if you talk about it, maybe it like I always said, there's like with the people who are actually deal with that shit. It's when they stop talking about it that's kind of the problem. Is when they don't deal with it when they just show up and they're like, here's my karate trophy from. 1998, I figure you might like it. And they're like, what the fuck's going on, man? Yeah. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, he's like, I was going to buy new shoes, but what's the point? Whoa, all right. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just riding around with a bicycle with a flat tire. Who cares? Whoa, okay, all right, pull it back, pull it back. <laughs> or he's just French, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> We only got. I, mean, I think. I think we've only got a few more minutes left. Is there, is there anything particularly you wanted to talk about while you're here? We, we've discussed it. We've had quite the fluid. Uh, hmm, you know. <laughs> we did. I didn't mean to bring up fluid. I know that's your suicide move when you're 57. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if you said, "I'm just going to go to a public pool." Imagine if you did that. The oh yeah. With the cigar still. <laughs> With your dick and a hard, hard disc. Just walking oh, to a public kids, pool. <laughs> just a wave pool. You just wait for that first wave. <laughs> the last thing you hear is. Children being pulled out of the water oh. while their parents scream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your small, naked bodies just getting kicked around by the jets. Oh, no, no, that's going to be hard if you want to walk into the ocean, but you live in, like, the Midwest. You're like, <laughs> I, want, I want to walk in the ocean, but I live in Iowa. What the <laughs> fuck am I going to do? You just go to a pool. <laughs> And then the guy she's trying to pull you out. Fuck off! I'm trying to yeah. die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Uh, ah, stop committing suicide in a public pool. Just like really hard. Like just every day. And the pool guy's got to fish another body out. Oh. Fuck. Fuck, man. <laughs> just some teenager. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Seasonal affective disorders are fucking around this year. <laughs> That's even harder in the hot tub. You just walk into the middle of the hot tub and you just, just oh, sink just down sink. on your knees. <laughs> can I can I uh, can I end this by doing one of my favorite impressions? You can absolutely end this by doing one of your favorite. Okay, impressions. all right. This is my impression of Bane. Bane. Bane from Batman. Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we are the night's entertainment. <laughs> This is a good example of why impressions only work if you get the face. It's hard to get his face because he can't yeah, really he can't see it. Just so. get the big fucking I liked it. I thought it was great. I wish he'd done the whole podcast like that. But then I think he would have had a stroke, though. He was like, I was born in the darkness. Do you know where Harvey Dent is? I can't do a Bane. For Harvey. That's one that I can't do. Can you do a Bane? Oh. Uh, kind of did just now. Kind of. That's all I can do. I was born in the darkness. That's pretty good. I was born in the darkness. No, but you, that's the Joker. No. You're doing the Joker right now. No, but Bane was the one that says it, right? Or no, that's Joker. Your... Yeah. Darkness, Dark Knight. 
You're Joker. The one that talks no, Bane's the one that says he was born in the darkness. You merely. I was born in the darkness. <laughs> oh, that's He's got the fire. voice, but that's Bane. Said, that says that. You, you know who Bane is? Tom Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. From oh. Lar- from Lar- <laughs> from Laurel and Hardy. You had something deeper to this. Have you guys seen the new Batman movie, Batman Whites? It's so fucking oh, good. Man. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> the Whites Night, and yeah. it's just <laughs> black guys. It's just him at a golf golf and country club. <laughs> like, I, I told City. her not to let them in. Goyam City. Yeah, you see the Goyam Whites. City. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes the Batman. Here we come. Okay. <laughs> Flash the bat signal. Not too long. Cost money. Come on. Okay. Everybody, here we go. Oh, God. That Batman, I tell you. Oh, boy. Oh, that Batman. Batman, I tell oh, you. Oh. God forbid you have to pay for another <laughs> Batmobile. Commissioner Lipschitz. <laughs> God forbid. Oh, Batman. Thanks for coming. They're out of mustard. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy. I'm Batman busy. You can. That's a difficult thing. Like superhero casting is. I, I'm not a big superhero guy, but like they got to. That's. You can't fuck that up. What you mean? Well, I mean, if you get the wrong person to play a superhero in a movie, it totally fucks it up. Right? But I think with Batman, it's always been legit. Like you just gotta have a good fucking strong jawline. It's how. It's how well can you play Bruce Wayne? That's the thing, right? It's, hey, who's your Bruce Wayne? Yeah, who's your like Bruce Ben Wayne? Affleck was a fine looking Batman, but you didn't take him as anything else. He had yeah. the face to be yeah. Batman. Yeah, true. That's true. Yeah, best Batman of all time though, uh, Michael Keaton. He was also the best Bruce Wayne, I think. Fact. Because he was like a little bit more. I think the the idea of Bruce Wayne being this like kid, and like not like younger, like twenty two. I think he had to be a little bit more salty and a little bit. He had to have brooded longer. Yeah. And so Michael Keaton was what? Well, he was like forty when he played it, yeah, yeah. or something like. That. That's what he bald. Want. It was yeah. perfect. You big old ball Bruce Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bald man. Batman. Fuck. Uh, oh, and this is my impression of a Latino Joker. Okay. Okay, okay. I'll leave. No, no, no. You don't leave. You just stay until we end it. You don't fucking walk out. I love the idea of you walking out and coming back. Oh, you're here? Yeah. I, <laughs> Dude. This was very fun. I that enjoyed so this. Fun. This was really fucking fun. Yeah. I had a good time. By the way, yeah, we got to take out the part of, <laughs> are you here? What? Are you still here? Are we going to take that out? Yeah. Oh, no, fuck. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I was going to say, that destroyed all no, of the callbacks. No. That's no. like 30, 35% <laughs> of the podcast. <laughs> no, because <laughs> my girl, my aunt, love of my life, yeah. she h- hates when I talk about her, but I, I'm never going to stop. <laughs> I really don't know what's happening. Like I've got a lot of mixed signals here. Like I'm not sure what we should be doing. I don't know whether no, I should be at this point be going. Cool. I'm sorry the camera lo- broke for 35 minutes of the podcast. Or I love the, no, because he's like, can you please cut that part out? And here's her first name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll bleep that. I've I've got a thing that bleeps it. I've got yeah. a first name Smith. <laughs> but you should just miss the bleep just by a bit. The G bleep. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. They're hard to hit, man. They are. What, women? Jesus. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with you? Holy fuck. That's a totally different podcast. What's wrong with you? Hey. Oh, my God. We're back to the kid with the nunchucks. Um, is, there anything, is there anything you want to plug to the two or three people in the Ukraine listening to this? Uh, um, yeah, just uh, Latin excellence. Just remember that uh, Latinos, like uh, we come from Mayans, Incans, uh, Aztecs, and uh, when the Spanish came and colonized, they couldn't take our spirit. I would have I would have liked that more if you had a tattoo on your arm of a bird, but whatever. <laughs> I would have believed it more, but I guess you can't get that shit done. So <laughs> they took your bird. <laughs> <laughs> that goddamn girl, bro. That's fucking ridiculous. That's crazy. That's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. And I bet you she's got a Chinese character under there somewhere. One hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. There's 100%. a picture of her wearing a sombrero some time ago. <laughs> For sure. She's like, I can't put the... And then her entire back piece is her just dressed up like Pancho Villa. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Uh, she's oh, she's like, I can't do that. I feel bad, but I did this myself with a stick. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, it was lovely to have you on the podcast. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so bro. much. Thank what are your you. social medias? Where can they find you? Uh, no Champagne Poppy for uh, Instagram and... Uh, TikTok, I don't have Facebook, I don't have Twitter. 
Yeah, good for you. Man. I got off Facebook a long time ago. I'm I happy. fucking hate Facebook. Though. Fucking hate it, man. Yeah. Can't take it. Yeah. I hate Facebook. Sorry. I <laughs> and uh, Jared Campbell, you're not here, but you're here. I'm not here. But you're here. You will be, though. You will be, but you're not here now. No. And then later on, we'll talk about how you're here, and then Marie can be not over here. here. That's what's going to happen. Love that. Right? Uh, the have- lovely Harbor Podcast Studios. Thank you so much for having us. Mikey, we miss you. We love you. Um, please. Michael, you're okay. Mikey, you know what? Um, if you can if you can get a message out, tie it to a pigeon's leg, send it to me. I'll eat the pigeon, but I might find the message. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I like how I'm pointing to where he normally is in the space that I've kept a shrine much as it was when he left see he's got his stuffy over there with the Just weird the one beer yeah the one beer the stuffy with the weird stains um <laughs> nobody talks about and the tiger beat poster um thank you so much for listening to the podcast please uh like rate and subscribe you can sign up to the patreon patreon.com slash this is simon king and i'll probably put some stuff up there or i won't but it's like less than a buck who gives a fuck um that's how it, that's the rhyme less than a buck who gives a fuck Less than a buck who gives a fuck. That's how, yeah, that's how it used to be like, uh, like back thrifty rent a car. That's what it yeah. was. <laughs> I used to be riding trucks, but now I just ride luck and I go down and I make the buck buck. Get it? Buck buck. Yeah, right? Chris Rock. That's pretty good. <laughs> that was a very good Chris Rock. Wow. Chris Rock without doing wow. the voice or wow. any of the words or any of it. An impression, a meta impression. I made an impression. I love that. That's a great way to end it. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Thank you, Marita Lopez. Thank you. That's what's wrong this week. Fuck. 